Many modern pastors and church members, perhaps innocently misguided, have accepted a deadly false teaching when it comes to God's law. Hi everyone, this is Dustin with Hope Through Prophecy. On this channel, we help you to better understand Bible prophecy and be prepared for these end times. Many well-meaning Christians have lost sight of the role and purpose of God's law. First, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified of all the powerful content we have in store for you. Many modern pastors and church members, perhaps innocently misguided, have accepted a deadly false teaching when it comes to God's law. They believe that it is no longer binding since we are under grace and not under the law. What does the Bible say about this? Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. You see, to be under the law means to be living under the condemnation of the law. This happens when we disobey or break God's law. We are then condemned by it. While it is true that as Christians we are living under grace and not under the law, this does not give us permission to break God's law and sin. Think about this illustration, friends. You are speeding down the highway with the pedal to the metal when you see those dreaded blinking lights in your rearview mirror. A police officer approaches your car and confirms the obvious. You were speeding. However, the officer then does something that he doesn't need to do. He gives you grace. Instead of writing a ticket and making you pay for your action, he pardons you and tells you to slow down and be careful. Now friend, how should you respond to this grace? Should you floor the gas pedal and put the pedal to the metal, burning your tires as you peel away? Of course not. If you do this, the officer would most likely write you a ticket. Instead of grace, you would now be under the law. Yes, when we confess our sins and are forgiven, we are under grace. But we must respond to this grace by obeying God's law and not returning to sin. If we return to sin, we will once again be under the law. As New Covenant Christians, it is essential that we obey God's law out of our love for Him. Notice this passage that describes the New Covenant. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Notice that God promises to write His Ten Commandment law on our hearts. That is, if we choose to follow God, He will teach us to love and obey His laws. Let's think about this for a second, friends. Does the teaching that we no longer have to obey God's law even make sense? Think about the Ten Commandments. Which of these should we now be allowed to break? Should we now steal, lie, murder, take each other's wives, take the Lord's name in vain? Does God now say it's acceptable for us to do these things? Of course not. God's law points out sin, is the foundation of His government, and can never be changed. So, what does God say about preachers and ministers who teach that we no longer need to obey God's law? Please pay careful attention to this strong wording. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments, and shall teach men so, so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Friends, God hates the teaching that we don't need to obey His law and he will hold ministers accountable who teach this false doctrine. Perhaps the greatest proof or strongest evidence that God's law can never be changed is the fact that Jesus came to this earth to pay the penalty for our sins, the broken law of God. If God's law could ever be changed, altered or done away with, then Jesus would not have had to die to save us. Referring to Jesus, the Bible says, Who his own self bare our sins in his own body on that tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Notice that he died on the cross to pay for our sins. Remember, sin is the breaking of the law. In fact, during his life here on earth, Jesus taught that we should obey God's commandments, and he perfectly followed them himself. 
He says, But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Jesus' death proves two things about God. Number one, he is love. He sent his only son to die for our sins so that we may have eternal life. Number two, God is righteous. His law cannot be changed. Even his own son had to pay the penalty of death because of our breaking of the law. He took these sins upon himself. What a loving and righteous God we serve. Sometimes Christians who seek to obey God's law are accused of being legalist. Think about this for a second. If a parent tells their child to clean their room before they go outside, and the child obeys their parent, should the child be accused of being a legalist? Of course not. As Christians, we should want to obey God's laws because of our love for Him and our desire to please Him. We should not view our obedience as earning our own salvation, this would be legalism, but we should obey God out of love and to show that our faith is real. After all, the Bible says that faith without works is dead. In fact, Jesus tells us plainly, If ye love me, keep my commandments. The Bible says, And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. On the other hand, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Every successful nation in the world has laws. These laws serve to protect that nation and keep it safe. Would the government of God be any different? Is it reasonable to think that God does not have laws that protect and guide his people? Listen to what the Bible says about the permanence of God's law. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. God's law is eternal and can never be changed. Many people have a misunderstanding of which laws in the Bible are done away with. There are many laws in the Old Testament that were designed to bring people's attention to the coming Messiah, which is Jesus. These laws, such as sacrificing lambs and goats, and many others, were called ceremonial laws, and Christians no longer need to follow them. They had their fulfillment in Christ. The ceremonial laws in the Old Testament, along with the laws given specifically to the nation of Israel, are known as the Law of Moses. These laws should not be confused with the Law of God, also known as the Moral Law or the Ten Commandments. We have clearly seen from the Bible that the Ten Commandments are eternal and permanent. Notice the clear difference the Bible makes between the Law of God and the Law of Moses. The Bible says the Law of Moses was written in a book by Moses. The Law of God is written on stone by God. The Law of Moses was stored in the side of the Ark of the Covenant. The Law of God was stored inside the Ark of the Covenant, showing a clear distinction between the two laws. The Law of Moses is contrary to us or against us. The Law of God is not burdensome. The Law of Moses is carnal or fleshly. The law of God is spiritual. The law of Moses was abolished or completed at the cross. The law of God will last forever. As you can see, the Bible makes a clear difference between the law of Moses and the law of God. It was the law of Moses that was nailed to the cross, not the law of God. The Bible is clear and we have already seen that we are saved by grace. However, the Bible also speaks of a judgment. Every human being will be judged to see if their faith was genuine, to see if their lives match up with their claim to believe in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And how will we be judged? So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. We will all be judged by God's law here referred to as the Law of Liberty. The previous verse, 11, makes it clear that this Law of Liberty is referring to the Ten Commandments. 
It is true that Jesus will be our advocate in the judgment, and His precious blood will forgive us of all our sins that we have confessed. However, any sins that we hold on to will not be forgiven. God does not want us to be confused about what our standard for holy living is. He wants our duty to be clear to us. The Bible says, Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Let us learn to love and obey God's law, for all men will be judged by the law of God. The Bible promises that those who surrender their lives to God and keep His commandments will be granted access to heaven. Consider the thrilling promises given in this verse. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. On the other hand, there will be those who profess to be Christians, but are not obedient to God's law. The Bible describes their fate as well. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Iniquity is another name for sin, and we have seen that sin is the breaking of God's law. Those who continue to break God's commandments, even if they have done many good things in their life, will be destroyed. Friends, I hope you choose to give yourself fully to Jesus. I hope you choose to cherish His law and strive to obey each of His Ten Commandments. If this is your desire, please write in the comment section below, Dear Lord, write your law on my heart. You may be thinking, Lord, I can clearly see from the Bible that I must obey your commandments. I want to show my love for Jesus and follow His example by obeying your law. But I don't know if I can. I have failed so many times before. But friends, obedience to God's law is possible. He would never ask us to do something that He will not give us the power to do. Consider these precious Bible promises. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. God will help you not only to obey Him, but even to desire to obey Him. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Friends, total obedience is possible. When we choose to obey Him and put our trust in Jesus, He will give us all the power we need. Once again, I hope it's clear to you that God's law, the very reflection of His character, is eternal and will never change. I hope it's clear that those who obey the Ten Commandments will receive eternal life, and those who continue to break God's law will be lost. If you love Jesus and would like to commit to obey His commandments, please write in the comment section below, Lord, write your law on my heart. If this video has been helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. If you would like to keep in touch with me and receive several free offers, including a powerful online Bible study course, just text HOPE to 50597. Friends, keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith.